Welcome to Kimecast, where we break through and cut the BS in sports medicine, rehabilitation, and sports performance, and talk about how things really work. Welcome to Kimecast. Tony Mikla with Evan Hauger is our first guest on the podcast, Ryan Matthews. Super excited to have Ryan with us. We've known each other for quite a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, been through quite a a bit together when he was uh, playing pro ball through his stint with the Rockies to the Nationals and even finishing up in Anaheim. And then to now, what he's doing now in in the development of of young players is really phenomenal. So excited to talk about that a little bit tonight. But first, uh, let's have him. What are we going to have a drink here, man? All right, let's do our, our beer of the episode. So we're doing a repeat. This is our first repeat. I think this was our inaugural episode, actually. I think really? this is the beer from the first episode. Mm-hmm. But we're repeating because this is Ryan's favorite beer. So we've it got is. Pliny the Elder here. Well, that's a good reason. Yeah, Pretty cliche, reason. huh? It's, it is a cliche. cliche g- favorite beer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, all right. it's another one of those strong IPAs. So yeah. Get things going quickly. <laughs> That was my, uh, when I was on a podcast, somebody else said that was one of their first questions, is what kind of beer do I drink? And I don't think my answer is very good. I wasn't invited <laughs> back, so it must have been. <laughs> yeah, Pass that down. You're not, you're not necessarily a snob. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. I got a buddy that says he keeps it NASCAR. So oh, yeah. Anything you'd see on a NASCAR, he'll drink. So, I mean, so PBR. You're not going to see Pliny the Elder on the side of a NASCAR. Yeah, you know I mean? he's a Bud Light Bud guy. Light, Bush Light. <laughs> that's fair. Bush Light. Oh, man. Like that's a they didn't know they still make that. I didn't yeah. either. That's, oh. It's good, though. It's good. Um, so, pumped to have you here, Ryan. This well, is, thank you for having me. I'm pumped phenomenal. to be here. You're the inaugural guest for a reason. Um, like Tony said, you, you started, you played pro baseball. So, let's, let's start with that. Let's go back to your career. Um, give us just a brief rundown on, on your, your career in pro ball. Yeah, um, played for a long time. I don't know the exact number. I think 11, 12, 13 seasons, somewhere around there. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. Uh, growing up in the school of baseball was pretty unique. Um, I just think it was, you know, it's a lifestyle that that you can't, it kind of chooses you, you know what I mean? You got to get drafted. Um, so it's a cool fraternity to be in. Uh, very fortunate to have grown up there. Um, but a lot of the horror stories of pro ball are, are true. You know what I mean? Like, um, like I said, I was very, 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 very fortunate to get a signing bonus. So um, that helps supplement the income in the minor mm-hmm. leagues and get a few better meals and, you know, pay for better training in the off season. Right. I think we had another conversation. I didn't have to get a job in the off season. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but there are definitely guys that have to do that, you know, and that's just the reality of being a minor leaguer. Um, so like with the good comes the bad. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of long bus rides, a lot of peanut butter and jellies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, <clears throat> and then a lot when you, of. And then when you get to the show, it's all worth it. Oh yeah, you know that doesn't have. It didn't happen very fast. <laughs> yeah. um, I uh, I think I spent eight years, eight full seasons in the minor leagues before. Grindy. Yeah, I was a 27 year old rookie. Um, I had Tommy John in the middle of it, so yeah. there was a big pause. You know, put a. I think 18 months out of competition. Yeah. So that was a big chunk of it. Um, but yeah, coming back from Tommy John, I was, you know, pretty, had pretty good minor league career under my belt, was pretty experienced and I was healthy again and got to the big leagues in 2011 and um, turns your world upside down. <laughs> I mean, a kid from small town Galt now in the big leagues pitching on TV, it's, uh, it's about as crazy as you could imagine. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. It was, it was a fun time. Sweet. I think that's an awesome journey, yeah. for, especially as a pitcher, like to spend that much time in, in the minor leagues and throw for that many innings and that yeah. long and then, and then to make it and to have the success that you had too, I think is, is fantastic. I know I remember in Colorado when you were with, with, the future, with the future stars, which is such a cool honor yeah. at the minor league level too. Yeah, that was huge. That was really fun. That was kind of like the first taste of like what it's going to be like in the big leagues, you know, because we played right before the Major League All-Star game. Um, they will, they bust us into the stadium like we were major leaguers. They put us in a major league hotel. So it was kind of like your first taste of the big league life. It was that was a cool experience. Yeah, the bus is a little nicer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Very a lot. Well, you spend a lot less time on the buses. You know what I right. mean? In the yeah. major leagues, just from get, the airport. It's like to from the, the airport to the hotel, hotel to the field. Instead of from somewhere in South Dakota to somewhere in Wisconsin oh, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Not 12 hour journey, yeah. like 25 for sure. other 25 year old men yeah. on a bus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you guys could imagine what what that would be like growing up like that, you know, spending all my, early, all my 20s basically with a, you know, 
frat bus, you right. know what I mean, driving yeah. around the country. Oh, yeah. But it and was, the persistence, it was cool. the persistence that takes to go, you know, to break into the big leagues at 27. I think a lot of guys cash out before that or give up before that. Yeah, point. cash out, or they're, you know, they're just their time has expired. Yeah, they're done. You know, it's a young man's game. Yep. Right. Um, it's just, you know, the organization looks at you as a commodity, which, I mean, I run a business now, so the business side of things on the baseball makes a lot more sense to me. Um, and I would do it the same way, you know. A lot of times it's it burns some guys and their careers in before they would want. I mean, my career ended before I would want, you know, but I don't think anybody ever or the very select few get to play for as long as they actually want to. Right, you can name it on one hand. It's like Barry Sanders and the guys yeah. who retire when they Yeah, you know what I mean? They're top. like, hey, I'm going yeah. out on my, on my terms. Yeah. Like, not many – at least not for baseball. Not yeah. many baseball careers in like that. Right. And especially nowadays, um, like I said, it's a young man's game. Mm-hmm. Um, they want to know how much they got. You know, how fast can they get to the big, get you to the big leagues, and how long can they keep you? You know, if they get you there at 21, they got a lot of you know a lot of span. So, 27 year old rookies don't really don't really exist very much anymore. Right. So so there's here's your baseball career, and then this obviously has turned into something else now outside yeah. of baseball. So you retired. And then you and Casey Weathers, we can shout out Casey on this. Yeah. Um, you and Casey Weathers started a business. Will you tell us about that? Yeah, and Jeff Marquez, too. And Jeff, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so yeah. shout out to Jeff. Yeah, he just um, hit me up the other day, too. So. Yeah, that's so good. Tony yeah. has some experience with Jeff, too, in our early career. We were both, you know, with Tony over at um, the place across town. Um, yeah, but uh, Casey. I think, I think it's cool that you went from, like, this time where you, you've, I mean, in, in being a, and being a coach and a, a therapist with you when you were in the league. Yeah. And then seeing this this 10-year run and, and how hard you worked from mm-hmm. a young age up into through, you know, like you said, through your 20s. And then now what you guys are doing with these young athletes, I, I have to see, feel like that's, like, awesome to give back. And I, they don't get to see you do it, but I can testify to how much how hard Ryan worked right. as an athlete, right? Yeah. And I think that's what you're giving back to these young guys now in their development process. You know, that's um, – you hit the nail on the head. You know, I think that's one thing that I didn't see coming when I got into this is how much just teaching them how hard you have to work to be successful. Um, and I think that goes with anything. Like, I, on the flip side, I've seen how hard you worked, you know, to get to where we're at. I see how hard Evan works every day, you know, so – and that's why I, you guys are so successful in what you do too. But teaching these kids, hey, you have to work really hard. Um, and just making them understand is more than any mechanic or any like pitch shape or anything I could do on a, on a baseball side. And I didn't really expect that. So, yeah. you know, that's kind of been the biggest thing that I could give back. It's like, man, I made it because, honestly, I could say, I made it because of one reason. It's the persistence. Mm-hmm. I didn't, wasn't going to give up. And I was willing to work for it. You know what I mean? I seen my father grow up as, you know, doing plastering and like masonry and just how hard he worked. And I'm like, well, if I stop this, that's what I'm going to go do. And I'm going to have to work that hard anyway. So (laughs) I might as well work hard like this, you know? And I just just never (laughs) thought, I never lost that. You know, I'm not saying that I'm some motivational, like, hey, I'm the hardest worker ever. But I just looked at it as a kind of different point of view. Like it was never a job. I looked at, hey, if I fail at this, I'm going to have to go get a job, you know? And I think that's what I try to tell the kids, like, you know, take advantage of this window. You're playing a sport, and all I ask for you is really give it your all. And these kids are succeeding, you know. I see a lot of turnaround in their personal life sometimes, you know. They just get some direction, and they work harder at their schoolwork. And, you know, I think that's that's been what I've been really fortunate to give back. That's really cool. Yeah, that's really – I think that's a a cool, like – a side of strength and conditioning that's yeah. probably not well like recognized, yeah. especially when you're working with youth from, you know, whether it be high school kids or in, through college or whatever. But when you when you when you work with an athlete and, and you give them some focus and you, you demand more from them right. uh, athletically or from the body, I think that they you know, we find we we've, we've learned it over the years. Mm-hmm. You have to dive deep, figure out who you are, and yeah. I think that gives you tremendous confidence. And then you go succeed in something completely away from the sport exactly. which, which is that's just a byproduct yeah which is such a huge win for what we all do yeah, yeah that's cool and you always hear the best coaches like mike shashevsky always talks about he's not a basketball coach he's a coach for making good leaders and good young mm-hmm. men for the future yeah. so yeah. It's, it is much more about the character of the person yeah and that's what you've done is you create an environment so talk talk a little about the environment that you've kind of set up down there yeah it's that you know it's i mean in for lack of better words it's you know we create an environment that we we push kids to be successful and it's like look this is what's expected of you um and this is what the environment expects of you you know it's kind of self-policed now you know um 
We're, we incentivize, you know, attendance and signing up and showing up on time. And, um, you know, we penalize guys that miss their, their times or show up late and things like that. And it, it's funny how, how the ship just writes itself once there's a little bit of that. Right. And it's like now they start showing up on time. We instill some good habits with proper warm-up. We don't allow, you know, kids to come in and just start doing stuff. Yep. And it's we're stickler on those little things. It's like you're going to do your warm-up and you're going to do it properly. You're going to do your recovery and you're going to do it properly. And it's like if we just start in those right places with those good habits – the rest of the work comes along. So and you made a great point there. It's not about yelling at them to get it done. It's about creating an environment where they see everybody else doing that. And when they don't do that, they're the weird one. They're yeah. the odd one out. Yeah. And they don't get the time they want. And then it's you don't even have to say anything. It just it, it's true. It's like it's like the environment almost is like your dad when he's like, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And it's like they don't they'd almost exactly I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd almost rather them mad at me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they're just disappointed and they're not gonna get mad and it's like they just expect more of me. Yep. So they they just do it. You know, they start expecting more of themselves. Yeah. yeah. So it's a cool environment. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, the personal growth is, is, is amazing. Right. So Ryan runs uh, Optimum Athletes, and it's really to see what, what you guys have grown as a, as a baseball developmental academy is almost yeah. what I would call it. I don't know if that's the right yeah, word for you. Yeah, that but, is the right word. But Absolutely. From, from throwing to hitting to, to strength conditioning to this whole concept of personal confidence and yes. accountability over the last two years it's you know we've been honored to be partners with you in this process and, and see it just take off it's been it's been a lot of fun down there in SSC yeah I mean I can honestly say this you guys say you're honored but we honestly couldn't have done it without you guys um just the guidance and direction that we've gotten from from you guys um has been huge you know uh, I think what we're doing and the places we're going is going to be even even bigger yeah. so um but yeah the partnership has been unbelievable you know um Having Evan and all, all of the therapists there that, you know, our guys know they have as a resource. Um, I, can't, I can't count how many times I've just walked over just to give a kid peace of mind. Like, hey, you know, he's feeling this. What do you think, Evan? And Evan will give him a little explanation. And you just see the worry yeah. come off of him. And it's like that doesn't happen in most places. Yeah. There's a day or two carryover before they can go get that peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And it's like we've just been able to, to just – kind of put everything under one roof and it's it's been fun it's i it's yeah. been nothing but fun so. and I, I think our philosophies have lined up in a lot of ways and i think one thing that you guys do different than i've seen other people in the sport world do is you guys rely heavily on assessments you guys assess everything and, and you set and you reassess you assess mm -hmm. you make a correction and you reassess and that's what we preach in the in the pt and, and performance world all the time and it's not yeah. always done in in sport and you guys like lean very heavily on numbers and data and um, I think that's that's super cool, and that mesh between the two of us, we've, we've combined our assessment process 100%. to make uh, to make I think a really cool assessment. Yeah, it, it has been. You know, it just gives you a place to start with everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you a really good uh, roadmap. I almost want to say to how we got to develop this kid. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, I, we talk about it all the time with guys. It's like, hey man, I can take him over there and I can teach him how to throw. But if we don't fix some of this stuff that came up on the table or in the weight room or something like that, what I teach him over there is not going to matter. And, you know, having that resource right there has been huge. Not sending them out, hey, I can't teach you the throwing stuff. You need to go find a guy or a shop that can, yep. that can help you with this. Yep. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been great. That assessment's been huge. Um, and then all the data you guys collect in other ways, too. You guys have some really cool tech there, like yeah. the Rapsodo and the K-Vest and all these things. that you, you just you can't fake those numbers. It takes the eyes out of it completely. Yeah. And you, can't you can't fake the numbers yeah it, you can't you know and it's it's almost the way the game's going as well you know mm -hmm. we get i get more and more college coaches like hey how's he move and just the you you know the word movement and mm -hmm. it's not how's his mechanics they want to know like how's he move and i'm like well okay i got this assessment and i send them the scorecard you know the com scorecard and they're like oh this is sweet you know and now it's just another another piece for the kid it's another piece for the coach mm -hmm. um same thing with the tech we use on the baseball side you know they can they can see his mechanics based on these numbers they can see how good his breaking ball is based on numbers mm -hmm. and it's a lot less um subje subjective you know right. it's yeah. a lot less hey i think this kid's good mm -hmm. take my word on it yeah totally it was cool i mean i think we wanted to set up a a major league environment in the way of like what what you've been exposed to in the major leagues what we've seen as as coaches as trainers with with guys in the league is have this resources where you have you know have training you have coaching you have you have pt you have rehab massage you have all these services to, to take care of that athlete mm -hmm. 
uh, which is which is big. But obviously, guys got to the big leagues for a reason. Yes. So then the other part of this is how do we start with someone who's younger? Because our a lot of our population is in the high school age and, yeah. and moving on up. And I think what's a couple of things that are special is we really focus, and you guys especially run with this. This your Optum Athletes group is to take you and really work on their body yeah. and teach them how to, how to use your own body first, yep. how to generate more power, more efficiency. And then that's going to transfer to, you know, swinging the bat harder, throwing the ball harder. And I think this is so cool watching the, watching the games, the, this last, uh, last bit on TV. I mean, they have stats not being the biggest baseball fan in, in yeah, the world right. sitting, sitting here, but uh, <laughs> watching some games of recent and you see like, you know, they got, of course, we're talking about exit velocity, velocities and, and pitch velocities. And I saw a stat today on the scoreboard out there and in, in the live in the stadium on, on drop, right? Which I'm sure they're probably grabbing from a rap soda or something like that. Yeah. But what's cool is those numbers are getting sexy mm-hmm. to the athlete and yes. to the fan. Yeah. But what I see, and I think that we all see is, what does it take to get that exit velocity up? Yep. And that's where it comes down to like how we train that person's body and develop that strength base, develop that rotational power base, and make sure that the pieces are there so the kinetic chain can do its job. 100%. And then you get those sexy numbers. And I think that's what's missed and what, what, what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it's, it's funny all the time. You know, I get it all the time. I see these young kids. And I kind of talked with Evan today, and I'm sure this will come up down the road a little bit, but we put the cart before the horse a lot of times. And it's like, if you don't put, you know, driveline baseball uses this um, analogy all the time. It's like, you got to build the engine. You know, if you got a car with no engine, and you just look at these guys in the major leagues, they're specimens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? You got yeah. guys like Michael Lorenzen, Michael Lorenzen and uh, Giancarlo Stanton yeah. and yeah. Aaron Judge. Right, the freaks. These yeah. guys could. You mean you can't make people as big as Aaron? I mean, no, you can't, but I mean, <laughs> not naturally. no, not, not, that not making, but like, yeah. there's not, these guys are specimens, you know? Right. So it's almost like, Hey, we, we got to do this first, you know? And I think that's where my career took off too, is it was like, well, once I started actually like picking up big weights, like a professional athlete does and kind of looking like a little bit more like a professional athlete, I started performing more like a professional athlete. And I, I say it all the time, like all these guys that I played with in the major leagues, they absolutely were animals in the weight room. Every single one of them. Hmm. I, mean, I shouldn't say every single one of them, but... There's outliers, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. There's those guys that just, it came easy for them, but that's the one percenter. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if they don't do this, if we don't you know, address these strength issues or address these power output issues or motor control issues or whatever we're coming up with, you're never, you're never going to make it. You yeah. Know? So yeah. it's cool that we can dive in and do that now, especially with the high school population. You know, I, I didn't get that in high school. Yeah, and I almost didn't really get it in pro ball, you know, t- towards the end of my career, because right. a lot of this stuff wasn't on the forefront, you know, and it was kind yeah. of frowned upon. Yeah, to say that at the major league level that the guys were animals in the weight room—that would—that's not a statement I would expect from MLB, especially like maybe before 2010 or 2005, right? I mean, right. lifting ba- for baseball is kind of has been debatable as far as is it a healthy option or not. You know, I mean, it's been like, oh, it'll ruin your mobility. Oh, it'll. And it's it's like, pretty mainstream now, though. It, it is pretty now. well accepted that that's that's what it takes. You know, the strength and baseball strength and conditioning world is saying, oh, you want to do, you know, you want better mobility, um, get to in range in your squat, deadlift. You yeah. know, and it's like that was never said before. It was no, almost not, like yeah. you do this stuff, you're gonna you're gonna get tight, and you're gonna right. get stiff, and yep. you can't throw, and you can't. Yeah. But you just look. You don't get a neck like Mike Trout without lifting some weight. Yeah. Or a body like Michael Lorenzen, right. who's like yeah. putting chains around his neck and doing like pull ups, like. And it's like, whoa, that guy's a specimen. You know, I tell guys, I played with Aroldis Chapman. It's like he looked like Terrell Owens with his shirt off. He was huge. <laughs> There's a reason why he throws pitches 100 miles an hour. Yeah, he yeah. looks like he th- would throw pitches 100 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, Absolutely. You know, a lot of that was not mainstream. And it's like I was behind the eight ball when I got the pro ball, you know, behind the one percenters. I had to build this. Now these kids are getting it at a young age in college, in high school, because of shops like us. And people like you guys that can tell them and put them in the right place in the right program, they're getting a head start. I wish I had this when I was, you know, it's not that, it's it's new. You know, it's not yeah. something that people have been doing for a long time. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think from what we put together as a, as a group has really been this idea of, you know, when an athlete comes in, let's start with assessment. Yeah. And let, let's take a look and see what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses. And then let's let's 
let's go from, let's build a program that's right for you. And you spoke to the concept that it's a little more individual guided where mm -hmm. they get a program that's based on them. And they're not necessarily coached in a, in a team as a group, although they might show up all at the same time. Right. They have the independence to go uh, be accountable to their responsibilities. And, yes. and I, I think that that speaks to everything we've said so far. And then some guys are going to do things differently than others because their bodies are different and their, yeah. their needs are different. They might, they might both pitch. They might be on the same team. You know, they might yeah. both be starters. But one guy's got a mobility problem and one guy's got a little bit of stability or a, a strength deficit that we want to emphasize. And the idea here is we see performance enhancement really go through the roof when you start to go by assessment first. Mm -hmm. See yeah. what they're limited in, and then and then go. If they're strong, they're already strong. Like there's no reason. To, well, there's always reason to gain strength, but right. but it may not be our main focus. Right. Like, like let's work on their. Yeah. Let's work on what they're worst at, and that's where you're going to see this huge huge takeoff in performance. And then, of course, you, you know the idea would be less injuries as well. Usually, usually if we use that kinetic chain effectively, then the injury rates right. are down as well. Yep. So. Yep. Everyone, yeah. everything's more efficient. Everything works better. So 100%. less stress, yeah. everything like that. Yeah. yeah, and that's what leads to those cool numbers out there, the, you know, throwing 101 or, yeah. throw, you know, and, and having that drop on the ball and mm -hmm. the spin rates are up is that you've got, you've got control of your body first. Yes. Yep. And then, and then now you control the implement. And on that note, it's probably not really a coincidence that there's more people throwing 100 as the thought on all this stuff has changed, right? We've gotten more data driven, we've gotten more numbers. And I remember back in the 90s, people in 1995, back in the mid 90s, it's funny, if somebody threw 95, that was a big deal. Yeah. Somebody throwing 95, right. yeah. now, right. if you throw 95, that's not enough to get drafted. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, you, you, you gotta yeah. have more than that. Yeah. I think too is like it just being more accepted to get guys like that come from your guys' background involved in the process. Mm -hmm. um, when I have a pitching coach who's a pitching coach, that's his job. It's literally on his job title, telling me what I should do in the weight room. There should be a red flag there. You know what I mean? And that's why I don't just rely on my knowledge to tell guys what they should do in the weight room. That's why I got people yeah. like you guys and mm -hmm. other resources. And I think that should be a red flag. And it's, I think that's one, one of the big reasons is that it's just evolving. We're allowing professionals in that area to get involved in the development process. That yeah. outsourcing to an expert. I yeah. Think. We benefit from that with you too. We got a baseball kid with a, with a hurt arm, something's going wrong. We re rebuild them back, get them ready for a throwing program. You're the expert. Right. They come right. back to you to talk about how yeah. we get them back to back to life. So that, that, that collaboration has been awesome. Yep. Um, I think this leads us a little bit nicely into a, a segment that we've done on all of these episodes and we'll let uh, Ryan do this. We might be able to talk on this one for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, but sure what the fuck can. are we doing? <laughs> I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you take this. Man, that's a... Uh that's a black hole in the in the in the baseball world. <laughs> we had a couple ideas earlier. We, a couple we ideas did. Earlier. We 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 uh, we prepared for this. <laughs> so um, I think we touched on it a little bit earlier. It's like when we're not doing things assessment based first or strength based first or looking at a physical um, assessment or just a physical looking at it for, with that scope. It's like what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. I see kids that are ten years old. I saw a kid in a cage today backpedaling and he fell down twice. And he's about to get a pitching lesson on mechanics. And the and next like, thing somebody said to him was, we got to work on your front leg brace. This yeah. kid can't even run backwards. You can't run backwards. He's not strong enough to run backwards. Right. How are we going to talk to him about a front leg brace? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. What, 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 what are we doing? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's like nobody's thought that nobody before now has really thought about that. And it's like, to me, it's it's it's. It's elementary. It's you, you said it already. You got to build the engine. The other analogy yeah. is like shooting a cannon out of a rowboat. It doesn't work. You need a sturdy base. One hundred percent. Where everything know, goes. And, and we're telling these to... kids. And I think that leads into why we see participation go south. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as age goes up in baseball, you just see they get older, and participation is going like this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, it's probably because we've had this kid trying to do these specialized movements while moving fast and hitting a target on this slope like this when he's not even strong or coordinated or anything like that, I would get pretty frustrated and not want to yeah. go participate in that. Oh, that's a great point. Either frustrated or you know something goes wrong, right? If they're not dissipating forces correctly, and right. the kinetic linking isn't right, then the force has to go somewhere. And, yeah. and boom, now we're injured. And then they end up on our table. Yeah. And now it's like when you're 12 years old and every time you throw a ball, your ball hurts, or your ball hurts, your arm hurts when you, every yeah. time you throw a ball. <laughs> um, it's like, I don't want to go throw the ball. Right. I'm going to go shoot the ball or kick the ball or mm -hmm. something else. And it's like those sports 
like soccer and football, they're a lot less specialized. They're a lot less, um, hey, you got to do these movements so correctly. And it's just like, go run fast. Mm -hmm. Go hit that guy as hard as you can. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think if baseball was taught like that at a young age, I'm sure you guys had seen studies on kids that are trained that way. Quite a bit. I mean, that, that's actually something that I think TPI has did a really good job with Greg Rose. I know yeah. Greg Rose is on base you now, which yeah. I know you've done right. and, and we've done. Um, and they, they've got some phenomenal stuff. But what was what the research was showing is that that whole concept of, in especially in America, the way that we teach youth sports, and of course TPI is a golf-based program, right. Tice yeah. Performance Institute is, about, is a golf-based program. But the idea was, you know, hit the ball towards the flag. If you say that to someone, that immediately is going to slow down the swing yeah. because now they're aiming it, yeah. which would be the same in baseball. Like, hit that target. Well, if I'm going to hit the target, I'm not throwing it as hard as I can 100%. just by default, right? right? So that's what are you training? If that's Are we training a guy to throw 68 but hit the target every time? That skill doesn't scale. That doesn't. Right. That, that, that's not good <laughs> past the age of thirteen. That ain't gonna work for you. Right. So first thing, we need, if we're gonna if we're gonna be competitive in the sport, if that's what we're trying to do, is teach competition and 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 ability to kind of step up and use your body effectively. Let's teach you how to do that. Yeah. How to use your body effectively yeah. first, generate force and power, learn how to throw it more than sixty eight, hit seventy five, mm -hmm. hit eighty, and hopefully we kind of bring that target down a little bit during that process as well. And I, th yeah. I think you think those things go together for sure. I remember a, a kid when I was in, a little guy playing baseball, and I think I was sixth grade at the time, and I faced a guy who was a future major, major leaguer. We went to high school together for the next seven years, a big left-handed kid through about 96, and ended up drafted by the Orioles. I remember in the batter's box, I was in the back corner, you know, like this, because yeah. he's throwing, he was throwing heat in sixth grade, and I'm like, and it ain't, no one knows where it's going. Right. It's like watching Charlie Sheen in Major League. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no one knows where this is going. But he was throwing hard, and, you know, obviously he, he made it and, and, and did well for himself. Uh, not well enough because he didn't get the target dialed in quite right. good enough, but because yeah. that's that's what's incredible now is what these guys are hitting. But you know, anyway. it takes both. But I think too, it's like why 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 do we never look at it from the standpoint of we always tell guys that they're going to get better at hitting the target by slowing down. How yeah. do we know telling them to maybe speed up and have a little bit more intent? They might organize better for the task at hand, and they yeah. might actually hit that target. Yep. Yeah. You know, but nobody yes. thinks about it like that. It's like slow down, control it, right. and it's like if you pattern that enough times, that's what it's going to be. You're just going to be to slow. slow. And yeah, sorry, when you're 18 years old and your career's about to end in high school, we can't develop that because we miss that window. Yep. What you guys both said comes back to a type of cueing, right? From a movement standpoint, it comes mm -hmm. back to external or environmental cues, which we know from the research exhaustively in yep. the research that that's the best way to do it. Yep. And that's something that in baseball, particularly as a sport, at least when I was growing up, was not used. It yep. was very much like see the ball, watch the ball, get uh -huh. your hands to here, move your feet to here. And it, yeah. was, it was very technical. Mm -hmm. And what you guys do is completely different. It's very much task based, oh, environment based. Yeah. That's what we try, you know, externally. We try to keep the focus externally. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like going back to the young kid. It's like if I'm trying to make him aware of what his body's doing in space, but he can't even do the things with his body that he doesn't even know what his body's going to do when he starts to move it. Yeah. It's like how can I ask him to be aware of that? It's just it's just so tough, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so so to bring it to bring it all around and bring it back together, I think uh, one thing that, that OA does and Ryan does and his coaches do with these guys is we do a lot of of. of ball work whether it be weighted balls or medicine balls and mm -hmm. different drills and it's about getting some snap and getting that ball to explode get it to pop off the yeah. wall and getting some power production and though most of the drills are not necessarily pitching mechanics no it's it's about you learn how to use your trunk lose your, use your body effectively mm -hmm. and then let's get that first and then let's work on transfer which 100%. which will come and we've seen this forever and you know the evidence that if you're sport specific training and you're too specific and the fact that you try to simulate a baseball throw with a weighted ball there's some stuff that that's not so ideal there mm -hmm. but to do similar movements and to get them to understand how to generate force production yeah which at the end of the day is what we that's what we call performance in sport mm -hmm. is if you can generate kinetic linking and you can organize your body to generate the most force possible that's 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 what helps you be Usually successful. a good result that's it yeah, yeah. that's exactly yeah. right and then and then you develop with some practice and fine tuning you develop control on top of that so. yeah yep i mean it's just if we can, one, we got to move fast to throw things fast or hit things hard or do anything fast, you know, and usually more speed means better success, in, especially in baseball. Mm -hmm. um, the body's probably got to move fast. 
<laughs> to make an object go fast. Yeah. So it makes sense. It's sounds, like sounds like a Newton principle. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm not that smart, yeah. but You're I mean, there. I can get You're that. You know there. what I mean? Um, so it's like we better be able to move fast first. I don't care how controlled you are or anything like that. It doesn't matter if we can't move fast. And the more we move fast, we're probably going to get better at moving fast. <laughs> It can be that simple. It yeah. can be that yeah. simple. So it's like if we stop them from moving fast and then we ask them to move fast, probably not going to be very good at it. Yeah. I mean, shoot, I, looking back at, at my time in a non-baseball sport like basketball, I remember thinking like, yeah, like, you know, practice and shooting and, and, and doing that. And I always did it at my, at my pace, which right. wasn't really the pace it needed to be at. Right. And, you know, then your, your practice effectiveness is different than your game effectiveness. And, and this is true among the research. And again, oh, TPI yeah. did a phenomenal job at this, that they looked at, you know, thousands of golfers coming through, both amateur and pro guys, and looked at them on the driving range. And then they did swing analysis, driving range compared to actually a live shot with a, with a target, with, right. a, with, a, with a, a flag out there. And the, the swing patterns yeah. are different. Yeah. You know, so... It's just all about you got to you got to get to the point where you're practicing at game speed. Yeah. As as you know, that's that's not a new concept, but mm -hmm. but but bringing that all together is, is critical. So yeah. Well, it's been fun, man. Yeah. So yeah. be fast, train fast. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Inaugural guest. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Of yeah. Course. It's been good. it's been fun. Good to have you, Ryan. Appreciate it's good it. Good handshake. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. guys. No, it's, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what Ryan does at, at OA is, has been fantastic. They put out a ton of great stuff. So you guys can check that stuff out and, uh, and, and follow what they do. They put out a ton of great videos and education. It's all about really developing the, the athlete and giving, giving the client some opportunities. So I think it's, uh, I think it's awesome. So well, thank you. Check it out. Appreciate we'll, you guys uh, being part of it. We'll probably have you back, I'm sure, and talk more as, uh, as things go on. So. All right. As long as you bring a beer. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Kimecast. We'll see you next time. This was Kimecast, and we are the Kime Human Performance Institute. Thank you very much for listening. We'd love to continue the conversation with you. Please hop on our social media. It's at KimeHPI and engage with us there. If you'd like us to feature a topic or answer any questions live on the show, post your comments there. You can also check us out on our website at KimePerformance.com, and there you can see links to content that we've posted throughout our podcast for more information.